welcome to this month's Young Scientist Club meeting. For January, we made popsicle stick catapults. Okay, so we are gonna take a closer look at the biggest, baddest machines known to medieval man. We're gonna learn about catapults. So to be clear, we're gonna make a very scaled down model of catapults because I would get in trouble if I brought a big giant catapult in the library. So not only oh, wow. are we, cool catapult. Mm -hmm. not only are we going to become engineers today, we are also gonna learn a little bit about medieval history. So who knows what the term medieval means? You know, you ever heard of it before? Mm -mm. That's okay. Medieval is the term that refers to a period a long time ago. Not quite as old as dinosaurs, but it was back when kings and queens would build huge castles to protect their lands. And this is from the 5th to the late 15th century, so about 600 years ago. So long, long time ago. Not quite as long ago as the dinosaurs. There are several types of medieval machinery and they all were used to wreak havoc on castles. And they would do this by throwing big rocks, like boulders, cannonballs, and flaming liquids at their armies. Wow. Yeah. Very, very scary stuff. But the first one is the trebuchet. And this one works with a counterweight in a sling to throw the projectiles at the castle walls. The next one is called a ballista, and it looks sort of like a modern day uh, bow and arrow. And it's used to shoot arrows at armies. But we're gonna focus on the catapult. And the catapult is, has a big bucket or spoon that holds the fire, the ammunition, to launch it at their enemies. But of course we don't have flaming liquids or boulders. We have our pom-poms. And if you build a little castle wall out of Legos, maybe you can find something that would knock that castle wall over. So as always, when we tackle a new experiment, we do so as scientists. And who can tell me what is missing from this image? It's been a couple of months since you've seen it. Do you remember what the red vial is? The first step of the scientific method is question. So we form questions about what we're going to be doing. Does anyone remember what the next one is? After a question, we have to do our research. We find yes, research sir. that kind of answers what questions that we have. So we're going to start off with questions. Somebody ask me a question, something that we're going to do about today or something that you might have been curious about when you made your own catapults at home. Anybody have any questions? No? What about, do. okay, go ahead. Why do we use popsicle sticks? So we use popsicle sticks because they're small and portable and affordable so that we can give them away. And there's another reason why we use popsicle sticks and we're gonna to get to that in a minute. So that's a really great question. Does anybody else have a question? Yes. Go ahead. Um, what part of the, scientific, of the scientific method besides the question would you maybe use when you made the catapults? Mm. Well, that's a good question too. So what part of the scientific method are we going to use when making the catapults? Besides questions. That is another super good question. And we will tackle that one at the end. Okay? okay. All right. So let's move on to research to see if we can answer some of your awesome questions. And if we are a medieval knight, we might would ask, how does the catapult get enough force to throw the boulder? But we're not throwing boulders, we're throwing pom-poms. So boulder will translate to the sides of pom-pom just like the giant catapult 
is the scaled down version of what we're learning about today. But to answer that question, how does the catapult get enough force to throw the palm palm or throw the boulder? It all boils down to kinetic energy. In physics, the kinetic energy of an object is the energy that the object has due to its motion. Kinetic energy is an object in motion. And to explain it better, we'll talk about elastic potential energy. So elastic energy occurs when objects are squished, stretched, or generally deformed mm. by any manner. So the first one, if you look at it, we, they are loading their ammunition into the slingshot. They're not moving it, they're not pulling it. That is potential energy. When they pull back, you can see on the catapult, you pull it back, just like in the second picture, we're playing with elastic energy because there's elasticity in the wood that we've used. There's elasticity in the rubber bands. And then, hi, Miss Hey, just peeking to see what y'all are doing. And we're having fun. Good. And the third slingshot down here shows how we're releasing that elastic potential energy into kinetic energy and that flings our pom-pom. I can't keep my pom-pom in my spoon. Whoop, there it goes again. Well, many objects have elasticity. Even metal has elasticity. So our rubber bands have a lot of elasticity. It stretches really far. If you had a paper clip, paper clips bend, but they're not quite elastic. They don't always go back to their original shape. Wood has elasticity, or these popsicle sticks have elasticity. You can bend it and it pops back into shape. You bend it at, flings it forward. All right, so we're gonna put on our engineer hats and get to building one of these. I'm gonna show you, for those viewers who have not made their uh, popsicle stick catapult yet, I'm gonna show you how it's done. Or you can tear yours apart and we can build it together. Oh goodness. Okay, so to make the popsicle stick catapult, in the science kit, you receive 10 small popsicle sticks. And I've uh, secured together six of them. We're only supposed to do it on one side. We have six popsicle sticks. The next step would be to rubber band the two large popsicle sticks together on one end. Mm. You rubber band together nice and tight. You separate them. And then separate the last popsicle stick on your stack. And we're going to just fit those together. Like so. No. And yeah. shove them there. As far as it goes with tension in the top. Not that band was for. Wait a minute, that was a different way. That's what it looks like. The last step would be to secure the spoon to the top popsicle stick. Now the last step would be to be testing it out. Avery, what are y'all doing? Sometimes I can get a paper screen up there for you. Like right now I can see the Isaac and me. Then I can go right, and then we have a completed popsicle stick. Catapult. How many of y'all use the launch log? You look like this in your sheet. Oh, it turns it into an experiment because we have to, as scientists, collect data and repeat the experiment to see if the data we collected is the same. 
So Miss Lindsay took one of our kits home and she helped me make her launch log, which is very rainbow and very pretty. She ran a lot of tests on this experiment. She determined different variables, like how high and how low the catapult was by changing the number of sticks in the middle. She also changed doing it on carpet to doing it on hardwood. We'll take a look in a minute. Using our catapult or using Miss Lindsay's catapult, she first started with seven. She was like, that's a pretty good stack of popsicle sticks. And it launched her popsicle ball or her pom-pom ball 16 inches. Then she tried it again with just four popsicle sticks in the middle. And it went less than that. It reduced it to 15 inches. Then she tried again with 10. She made a huge stack of popsicle sticks and it went farther. It went 24 inches. But the perfect amount of sticks in the middle for Lindsay is six sticks in the middle and it went 35 inches. So that was her best model. She also threw not just pom-poms, but she did marbles and yarn ball and a rubber bouncy ball. And I bet all of those can be adjusted and changed to figure out which one will launch best for you. And who remembers what it's called when we change things about our experiment? You remember? It starts with a V. Mm -hmm. Say it louder. Variable. Yes. Variables are what we can change about our experiment to control different outcomes. After our experiment, we observe what we've done in our experiment. So tell me something that you've observed about your catapult and how it worked. Who wants to go first? Isaac, did you observe something about your catapult when you were building it or playing with it? It went really high. Nice. Did you change the amount of popsicle sticks in the middle to see if it will go higher or farther? Mm. No. It's okay. I noticed something. Go ahead. I noticed that, like, I started out with two popsicle sticks and it didn't go very far. Then I used all my popsicle sticks and it made a big, big difference. Oh, wow. So you adjusted the popsicle sticks, which is changing the variable, and it changed how your firepower was launched. That's awesome. <laughs> Anybody else notice anything? Uh, you can shoot two balls by a if you want to. Well, what does make the best firepower? Two pom-poms or two marshmallows? Did anybody try something besides a pom-pom and a marshmallow? I think two, like, um... Is this weird to work? We tried marbles. Me and Peyton. Did it work? No, it didn't really work. <laughs> we tried marbles. You did? Yeah, we tried marbles. It didn't really go very far. Hmm, but we I were on carpet. They're heavier. What do you yeah. think? I think it's because they're heavier. Mm -hmm. We're going to have to do some research and test that hypothesis. All right. We've made it to our conclusion. So tell me, what did you like the most about this experiment? On your making it or launching it? Both of I the think. I, I think launching it is the funnest. It is the best. But what did you not like about this experiment? Um, that was hard to build it. It can be hard but to build. What surprised you the most? That we that we are using popsicle sticks and spoons. And would you do this differently? Would you build it in a different model? Now that you know that there's different kinds of catapults, maybe. There's a lot of different models you can build out there and they can be found online. If you ask your parents to help you go online, 
we can get you more popsicle sticks if you would want to build something different. You'll just have to let me know, okay? And as always, you can explore further. We were engineers today. We learned a little bit about physics and we learned a bit about history. And if you want to explore further, you can come check out our STEAM book collection and we can bring them out to your car because we're still doing curbside. And always give credit where credit is due. A lot of our images were found online and you can find all of the citations here. Are you ready to figure out what we're going to make next month? Because it's going to be yes. really cool. Mm -hmm. Who likes robots? Me. Huh? I like robots too. Yeah, robots. We are going to build a model robot hand. And <gasps> is this going to be robotics? We're also going to learn a little bit about biology because we're going to this, we're gonna learn what that looks like by making it next month. Who's excited? Me. <laughs> Take a look at your hand and figure out what pulls your fingers. What makes your fingers move? Bones. Not the bones, that's a good guess. We're gonna have to wait till next month. <laughs> All right, everybody. I'm so glad that you came. Bye friends. Bye. Bye.